The second bit of this puzzle is just the probability of success. So if we start with 100 firms that raise seed money, our research shows that clearly not all of these firms are going to be successful. And so if you take into account what the probability of success is, that's going to enable you to think about some central tendency for what the average valuation is going to be once you've taken into account dilution. So what does the probability of success look like on average, and how should you think about this probability in terms of your own experience? Well, if 100 firms receive seed money, in the data it looks like fewer than 10 of these 100 firms will exit at the seed round above the value of the capital that is invested. So this is about eight total firms that will exit. Many of the firms at this stage are also going to end up failing without receiving future capital from Series A investors. In our data, about 40 firms are going to go on to receive Series A investment, which means that eight firms have exited, 40 firms go on to get future investment, and so over half of the firms here have failed at the seed round. Of these 40 firms that move on to get Series A investment, our data show that about four firms will have a successful exit. And of these 40 that move into Series A, about 25 total firms will raise Series B investment. Of these 25 firms, about three will have a successful exit. And then the 25 that enter will go on to either die or raise future investment. What this shows you is the probability of success or failure in the data. We can't tell you what the probability of success or failure is for your individual firm or your individual situation, but on average about 70% of the firms that we start off with in the seed round are going to exit at zero. As a result, doing the probability weighting here is going to be important to try and determine what the expected value of this equity that you started out with is.